What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. For today's video, we'll be going over the setup and programming process for the VGC VRN76, at least how I've set mine up. So join me and let's have a look. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Before we get started, I did a review of this radio that was sent to me by VGC, and if you're unfamiliar with it and want to check that out, there'll be a link to the review in the video description below. Now let's go over how I've programmed mine with both APRS and BSS. Programming the radio is made pretty simple and straightforward with the app, but there's a few quirks to go over that you may get stuck on, and I also want to show you how I've set mine up. Now I've done a factory reset on mine, so if you just got yours, it'll be in the same state that mine's in currently. First, go ahead and download the app called HT in your phone store, if you haven't already, and go and open that up. Now the first thing we'll need to do is pair the phone and radio together, so on the app, select Pair New Device. Then select walkie talkie. Now grab your radio and go to the radios menu by hitting the green button. Then hit up a few times to highlight pairing and hit the green button again to select that. Then head back to the phone app and hit scan if the scanning stopped. And the radio should be showing up at this point and go ahead and tap on it to select it. Then hit pair if you get a notification asking to pair. After that, the phone and radio pairing should be successful and we can move on to setting things up. Now let's start off with the quirky thing I mentioned. The APR setting requires an APRS passcode, which is unusual compared to other APRS radios I've used. and. This is really only required for APRS-IS, which is the internet-connected APRS network. Now this radio requires this passcode to use APRS at all, however, but it's pretty easy to do, so let's go through that process now by going to the three-dot menu on the top right, then Settings, and select APRS Settings. Now on that page, there is a get passcode option, but that takes you to a Chinese website. And my Chinese is pretty rusty, so the only thing I understand on this page is APRS and IS. Luckily, there's an easy way to get your passcode, which is just a number derived from your ham radio call sign. There's code on GitHub for this and a number of websites online using this code so you can generate this passcode using your call sign yourself. And I'll leave a link to one of these sites in the video description below. So once you go to that site, simply enter in your call sign, click generate, and you'll be provided with the passcode. So now that we have that, you can go and enter in your call sign and then the SSID if desired. Now if you're new to APRS and unfamiliar with SSIDs, these are an optional number that you append to your call sign to let others know info about your station or activity. I've included a list of these recommended SSIDs on the left. After entering in your call sign and SSID, hit verify passcode and we should see passcode is correct if everything went well. Now below that we'll see an iGate service section. An iGate is a bridge from the radio APRS network to the APRS IS network, which is the internet connected APRS network, like I mentioned earlier. This is similar to MeshTastic and MQTT, if you're familiar with that. So there is a server option that's set to Asia, but you'll probably want to change that to the country you're in if you're non Asia. Then there's options for radio to internet, internet to radio receive messages via internet, and range options that you can adjust to fit your need. For me, mixing internet and radio has always felt like cheating, and I prefer completely off-grid comms, so if you're like me, we can simply turn off the toggle switch for iGate service. Then below that, we have a share location section. The first option here is where you can auto-share your location 
over the internet if you like. Then below that we have options for location source, which can either be system, which is the GPS location, or we can use specific coordinates here. Next we have how often you want to transmit your location. Then below that, APR supports a number of different icons that you can use and whatever icon you select here is what you'll be seen as on the map to other users. Then the next options are if you want to transmit the current voltage or operating system, you can go ahead and flip these on as well. We can also set a message to be sent along with our location. So let's say we're monitoring another frequency for voice comms. We could put in something like voice 146.520. And with that, we have this APR settings page configured and can hit back. Next, let's go to ID signaling for some more APR settings we need to go and configure. If we go down to the automatically share location section, there's options for internet sharing and radio sharing. Turn these on to fit your needs. The internet sharing will share your location using the APRSIS network, and radio sharing will have your radio transmit its location. For my use, I'm just going to enable radio sharing only. Then we can select how often the radio will transmit the location. Five minutes is usually a good one to go with, and I don't recommend anything under a minute, as that will just create congestion and use more battery. Then you may notice we have some of the same settings from the previous APRS menu, like send power voltage and message. I believe the previous APRS menu is more internet focused, as the only setting there that seems to do anything, radio transmission wise, is the icon selection. So for here, if we want to send power voltage, we can go and turn that on. And then for message, I'll do the same voice 146.520, like we did in the other menu. Next, we want to use the APRs format. Otherwise, this will use BSS, which isn't really used in the US and shouldn't be used on the main APRs frequency. Here in the US, that's 144.390, and we'll get into some uses for BSS here shortly, though. So with that, we have these APR settings configured, and we just have one more menu we need to go to. So let's hit back a few times until we get back to the map. Now that we're here, let's hit the three dot menu again, then device settings, and then signaling settings. So here we have the last APR settings we need to configure. So let's set the channel setting to channel 16. We'll be programming channel 16 as the APR's frequency in a bit. Now for the path, we have a number of options. The usual default and recommended path is wide 1-1, wide 2-1. Now these path settings are how many hops your transmission will take. It's a bit of a complicated subject that's beyond the scope of this video, but I'll likely do a video on it soon. For now, I would stick with the recommended path, which is again wide 1-1, wide 2-1. Now at the bottom here, we also have a path with ARISS in it. This is the path used by the International Space Station's Digipeter, and you'd want to use this path as it's flying over if you want to send a APRS packet through it. More on that in a, another video though. For now, we'll go with wide 1-1, wide 2-1. Now let's get into BSS and how I have my radio set up for it. As mentioned in the review video of this radio, one of the features I liked was the capability of transmitting your location and call sign at the end of each voice transmission. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. This could also be a tactical call sign as long as you're using your ham radio call sign as required. Now this is handy if you want to be able to transmit your location to other team members without having to use a secondary frequency for APRS. The other users have to of course also be using a radio with BSS capability for this to work. Now one thing to note on BSS before some upset people show up in the comments section again. Since BSS isn't APRS, it's best to keep it off of the APRS frequency. Now I've been putting these nice calming videos of radios and creeks at the end of my videos in hopes that the angry commenters would calm down. But somehow they continue to be angry unfortunately. But with that said, let's go ahead and set up BSS now. From the main map screen here, we can go to the three dot menu. 
settings, ID signaling. Then we have a nickname option here, and this is where you can either set your ham radio call sign to be transmitted or a tactical call sign if you prefer. So let's say you're working an event and providing medical assistance. You could use a tactical call sign of Med1. So let's go ahead and put that in here for this example. And after entering that in, we'll then see that call sign is displayed on the radio's screen. Now this section has a login option, and honestly, I'm not sure what this is for. It isn't required, so I just ignore it. And next we have an ID signaling section. So to transmit the call sign we just entered, flip the toggle switch on for the ident info. Then to transmit location, flip that toggle switch on. And another feature of BSS that I mentioned liking was the ability for other users to interrogate radios and have them send out their current position. So if you'd like to allow your radio to respond to these, go ahead and flip this toggle switch on as well. Then finally at the bottom, there's the BSS routing section. This seems to be for the ability to rebroadcast BSS transmissions, but I've not gotten a chance to experiment with this yet as I'm waiting for another radio to come in. We'll explore this together in a, another video soon. For now though, we've got everything set up for BSS. So now with APRS and BSS set up, let's start programming in some frequencies. So let's go back to the main map screen and from this screen, select the hamburger menu on the top left here. And that'll bring us to a screen with radio controls and channels. Now this radio has 12 banks of 16 channels and comes with this default set of frequencies programmed in. Let's go ahead and get rid of this and start from scratch. So to do that, select the gear cog on the top right, then channels and groups. And here we can see the default channel group one. Go and hit the trash can on the right to delete it. Now let's add a new channel group by selecting new. So for the title, name it whatever makes sense for your needs. I'm gonna set this up with some of my general frequently used frequencies, so I'm just gonna name this one general. Then from here, we can just tap on each row for the channel we wanna program. So Let's put something in channel one by tapping on it. For this, I'll just put in one of the popular Knoxville repeaters from W4KEV, and we are limited to eight characters, so I'll just put in KEV Knox as the title for this one. The frequency for this one is 145.370. Then hit OK. Now this repeater has a tone that you need to get in, which is 100 hertz. And we can find those settings by selecting more. Then we have an option for TXCT CSS DCS. So we'll select that and then select 100 hertz. And since this is a repeater, we'll need to input the transmit frequency by selecting TX frequency and this one is 144.770. So with that, everything else looks good, so go and hit save. Now you can see we have the first channel programmed and you can follow the same procedure for the rest. Now we had a comment from a viewer asking if we can set up a single channel with a frequency of 437.800 for receiving and 145.990 for transmitting. And the reason he's asking this is because these are the frequencies of the repeater on the International Space Station. And to answer the question, it is yes, you can do this. So let's go ahead and set up a channel that way. So for this example, we'll just put that into channel two and we'll give this one a title of ISS. Now go and select more and for RX, We'll put in 437.800. Then for TX, we'll put in 145.990. And this one has a tone of 67 hertz to get in. So we'll tap on TX, CTCSS, DCS, and 
select 67 hertz for this one. And with that, we have that set up now. Also, you may remember earlier that we set up channel 16 for APRS. So let's go ahead and set that up for channel 16 by selecting that channel. And the title will be APRS. And the frequency here in the US is 144.390. Then we can hit OK. And that's all we need to do with that one. So we can go ahead and hit Save. Now I won't bore you with filling in the rest of these and we can just hit save here. And it'll ask you to sync a channel group to the radio. We just did group one so we can go and select that and then the radio will have those channels on the radio itself. Then from here you can go and add channel groups to fit your needs. For example, I enjoy aviation and I also forgot to mention that this radio will also pick up the aircraft frequencies in AM. So I'll add a group called VHF Air and add whatever aviation related frequencies in there. Then add a group with all the 2 meter repeaters and another with all the 70 centimeter repeaters and so on. Just set this up however makes sense for your needs. Once we have all of the channel groups programmed in, let's go back to the radio control screen here. Then on this screen, we have an icon that looks like a map and if we select this we'll have our list of channel groups we created and we can switch back and forth from what channel group the radio is using from here. So there you have it, the basics of programming the radio and setting up APRS and BSS. There's more to dig in with this radio but that'll do it for this video and if you'd like to pick up one of these radios for yourself I'll have an affiliate link in the video description below. And be sure to use the coupon code VGC provided for viewers of the comms channel of TCC. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you won't miss out on any future videos with this radio and more. Thank you all and have a good one.